Carlos asked a question about uh, where he could possibly getting, be getting air and fuel on an ISX 15 2350 a year model 2016. So that's about six years old and I don't know how many miles you have on it but um, I wanted to do the video because it's just easier than typing because I probably have more to say than you want to hear. So uh, first of all uh, you said you've got small bubbles in the filter. I'm not sure if you're talking about the glass bowl or if you are putting uh, that test line on the filter on the engine on the fitting on the high pressure and you're seeing air come out of out of there so air will definitely cause the um, fault that you've got uh, which translate those numbers 157 uh, suspect parameter number 157 fail mode indicator 18 that becomes a 559 which is rail pressure is below commanded so uh, if you've got air in the bowl that's on the side of the frame then the problem is going to be between the tank and that filter housing obviously and I don't know what filter you have some filters have two or three sections with o-rings some of, so what I'm going to talk about is some of the places that we have found air getting in the fuel. There's a, a probe in the bottom of the glass bowl that has an O-ring on it that checks for water in the fuel. We've seen it there. The problem's there. There's a lot of times there's a fuel heater that goes in the bowl or in the side of the can that has an O-ring on it. We've seen problems there. When you're looking for a problem, uh, you're on the right track. You said none of my lines are wet. So it sounds like you're, you're thinking right there. Look for places where, get a bright light and look before you disturb anything. Look where you see like a small line of dirt, almost like a string, but made out of dirt. Could be by a fitting, uh, could be around some threads on something because if, if you've got a very, very small leak, it'll get damp and then the dirt will stick to it. So if, if you just kind of, you know, blow on the fittings and the dirt goes off, but there's one spot where the dirt or dust looks a little bit darker, it's possible you might have a fitting that started leaking. If it's a threaded O-ring, then you're, you need to get a new O-ring. If it's pipe, obviously you can take it out and either put some good pipe dope on it or Teflon tape. I prefer pipe dope. I don't like to see the tape in any kind of pump, gear pump. Uh, on the cranes, I mean, if you say thread tape on a crane, though, you're in trouble because that'll just tear up those pumps and valves. So they only use high quality dope on, on the fittings when they have to. Anyway, back to your truck. Uh, some of the other places that you can get air in the fuel are the soft hoses and they might be nylon they might not be quote unquote soft but the hoses that go between the electric pump and the gear pump now you have a 16 so it might still have the nylon hoses on it they 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 kind of feel like they're hard but you can move them a little bit they almost feel like they would be plastic and break so those were nylon with the ends pressed in there's a couple little o-rings on those ends but they, I think they heat shrink them out when they make them. So I have seen where you suck air around the hose. If it goes from the, the housing on the side of the engine where the electric pump is, from there to the gear pump, I've seen those hoses pull air after they get some age on them. They won't necessarily leak, but they'll let a little bit of air in. So that's one possibility. Uh, the, in fact, the update on those pumps, they ba basically did away with the nylon lines on a lot of applications and they made them steel lines with braided steel in, in the middle just because the nylon didn't work out in certain cases as well as they had wanted it to. Uh, and by the way, the main reason they did that, that it was a campaign on some engines with the updated line went to all steel is they had some problems where there was a uh, 
check valve that plugged up and the fuel pressure in those lines got very high. And like if the regulator and the gear pump stuck and it, it just jacked the pressure up as high as it could and those lines would, they would just split and fuel would spray everywhere. So that's why they went, went to the steel lines on the update. Uh, so if it's not your lot, your not if you don't have nylon lines, if you got all steel and all your fittings are tight and you don't see any signs of dust or dirt around anything, I've not seen an electric pump cause this. Check all of your banjo fittings that have the washers. Just snug them up a little bit, make sure they're they're tight, and then um, last but not least, and I've only seen this once in our fleet. And uh, so it's kind of rare, but the, the actual gear pump itself, I've seen, we had one gear pump that was pulling in air around the seal on the shaft where it mounts into the back of the high pressure pump cam housing. And so we changed that gear pump and the problem went away. And... Uh, that one drove us nuts. We were changing lines and trying everything. I also had a mid-range uh, QS, QSL that the, we had a nylon line that was pulling in air. We had that happen on a QS uh, B672. The line wasn't wet, but we kept having trouble with, with the uh, 559s, and we changed the nylon lines, the one that was on the suction side anyway, uh, but we changed them all. And uh, the problem went away. So that's my thoughts on that. Uh, I can't think of anything else that could cause uh, that problem. If you have a fuel heater that's built into your filter on the frame, I want you to uh, pull that heater out and take a look at it. I'm going to put a video up. It, I'm about a month and a half ahead on videos, so it'll probably be a month and a half, but you're going to see something that's going to knock your socks off about a problem we had with uh, fuel restriction and, and an engine stalling and 559s, and they couldn't figure out what it was, and they finally found it, and you'll be surprised to see what it was. So that's coming, and it kind of ties into what you have, but check the fuel heater if you've got one. Um, if it's the one that's in the bowl, you can that one's not going to cause restriction problems. But if it bolts up into the top head of the housing on the frame, it can. So uh, there's usually two or three torque screws. Just take them out, and that heater will be like a big cigar. It'll pull right back out of there. And then the fuel goes in the end of it and then out the back of it, kind of like a tube, and they have ribbon elements in there that heat the fuel when it, when the heater's turned on, if you've got that. So it's something to check. And by the way, if you get high fuel restriction somewhere, you will see bubbles in your filter. Because what happens is you're putting too much vacuum on the fuel that's in there, and fuel does have air in it, believe it or not. And if you put a little too much vacuum on that fuel, that air starts to pull out of the fuel, and you'll see bubbles in it. And uh, so... So that, that's a strange phenomenon, but it's true. So if you have some way of checking your fuel restriction, just check it up to the place where it stops uh, being a vacuum and starts being a pressure. We actually have a banjo fitting that we drilled a hole in and put a test fitting in, and we screw that into the gear pump, and we use that to measure the vacuum right at the gear pump on the suction side of it, it's on the back of that high pressure pump. So we only do that on, on extreme cases when, when we're, you know, we're beating our heads on the wall, but uh, that's a Cummins approved way to check entire system vacuum. Okay, I hope that helps you. When you figure out what this is, please share it so that everybody else can hear because if you've had the problem, somebody else is going to have it too. And uh, when you guys ask for help on things, it also helps a little bit if I just know the chassis that your engine's in, like like uh, Packard would be Peter KW or Freightliner or Sterling or whatever it is. Just because like the Packards we have, they're still using all Strataflex fuel lines. 
but I've seen some freight liners in our in our mid-range trucks that had plastic fuel lines all the way to the tank. So that makes a difference uh, when you're thinking about what could be the problem. So mention your, your, your year, that's good. The engine model, the platform of the engine, that's good. You did that. Uh, and then uh, what truck basically it's in. And it, it also helps if you tell me the, the, the mileage on it. Because I might tell you a different answer if you have under 200,000 than I would if you had 700,000. Okay, in this case, no. But uh, in other cases, yes, it does make a difference. Okay, thanks for joining me. Have a good weekend. We'll talk to you later.